Despite the disappointing outcome of the season, there is one positive, and it is a player that was a breakout player. And if Jake Neighbors comes to your mind, that is 100% it. Going into the season, we all knew here in St. Louis that he was going to be a superstar because he had all the qualities of doing that. So I'm going to talk more about why you think Jake Neighbors is a breakout player and a lot more coming up here today on Locked on Blues. Your Locked on Blues, your daily podcast on the St. Louis Blues, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Locked On Blues. I am your host of Locked On Blues, Haley Taylor Simon, talking St. Louis Blues hockey with you per usual. I love the new intro, by the way. It has some rhythm and blue in it. And most importantly, I think that it just represents us here in St. Louis. Um, a lot to get to on today's episode. Neighbors, 100% we're going to talk about him being a breakout player future hopes, and also, hey, it's okay to be disappointed with how the season went. I think that there is a lot to digest from the season, and it's going to take time to talk it all out. We're going to have most likely coaching changes. There's a lot that's going to happen. Um, So it's nice to kind of focus on some of the good for now, and then obviously that good's going to be overcome with all the negativity that's going to – I know how it's going to be, okay? So we have that to get into as well. I want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So I want to start off by saying I don't think I've ever been more proud of a specific player in my life more than I am with um, Jake Neighbors, obviously. When you take a look at Jake Neighbors, and I think the reason why he is such a fan favorite is truly because of just the passion that he has when he's on the ice. Whenever Neighbors was on the ice this season, I just recall, you know, watching him put in maximum effort. And that is something that sometimes you don't always get out of players, right? Um, He showed confidence on the ice. And I have to remind myself that this kid just turned 22. Like, he is so young. That makes me feel old saying that he's young because I'm 25 and I'm like, oh, he's young, but he is young. Um, But even, you know, his career, right, especially when you take a look at this season, 77 games, assuming he's in tomorrow, maybe 78, um, 27 goals, 11 assists, 38 points. Unbelievable. Now. He did have 21 penalty minutes, which is fine, Um, but eight power play goals, pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, Last season, obviously, he only played 43 games with the Blues, and that resulted in six goals, four assists, and 10 points. And then the season prior, he played for nine games for the Blues, one goal, one assist. So definitely stepped up big time, and Neighbors was such an asset on this team helping, you know, just form the intensity that our offense really did need. And I feel like he fit in really well with Robert Thomas. And I just enjoyed watching Jake Neighbors play. It's crazy to think that in 2020, he was the 26th overall draft pick. And yet, I feel like he has just exceeded expectations. I personally just knew when we drafted him, that we were going to get a guy that worked really hard. But it is funny, though, right, that, you know, in totality, he really played his first real season, you know, right? And he just smashed it. So I think that at the end of the day, you have a guy that's good at passing, because he is. You have a guy that's good at taking shots, which he is. You have a guy that's a two-way player. I know we all talk about our defensive players being two-way defensemen. But even forwards, too, I mean, you still got to defend at some level. Um, And he just exceeded expectations on that block shots. Just a really dynamic player on the ice. I posted on Locked on Blues. I wanted to do a a little gift situation. So 
So let me go to the account. This is at Locked on Blue is my Twitter account. I asked you a couple questions today, so we're going to talk about all this. But I posted a GIF, and I said the player of the season, obviously, I don't know if you can see, but it's, I did Jake Neighbors. And a lot of you replied with different gifts. So I said, you know, let's start a trend. Like, who was your favorite player of the season? Reply with a gift. So Justin Scott put Robert Thomas. I mean, listen, in my bio on Locked on Blues, it still says it's Robert Thomas season because it's literally Robert Thomas season all the time. Um, then I got a Bennington gift. I love that. Oh, another Bennington gift. I love that, Barb. Thank you. So, all of, we have an argument here in the comments. So, Artin says, Thomas had the best season for the Blues. For, um, best forward in a very long time, but the player of the season is Neighbors. And Braden said, I wasn't ex expecting near 30 goals from our fourth liner. I was expecting about 80 to 90 for Thomas. So, this is what I want to say. I didn't say he was the best. I said breakout player. Breakout player doesn't have to do best player. When we do our best player, then that's going to be Robert Thomas, obviously. But a breakout player means, just so you all know where I'm coming at, it's a player that exceeded expectations. And I don't think a lot of people expected neighbors to do as well as he did. We expected him to play well, but not this well. So a lot of Bennington. Um, Robert Thomas. It's a lot of Robert Thomas and Bennington. So in reality, it's Jake Neighbors, Robert Thomas, and Jordan Bennington. So a lot of those three guys, which I'm not surprised about. Um, a little surprised that nobody said Tori Krug, honestly. No, I'm joking. If somebody gave me a Tori Krug gif and said that that was, uh... yeah, no. it No. You know what cracks me up, though? Like, this summer, I know that there was a lot of drama surrounding the Blues with the whole trade deadline, but it is funny, like, how horrible everybody was towards, um, you know, it just, everyone was just mean. And the thing is, I don't think that at the end of the day, like, Tory Krug, I know that he isn't the best player and not the best defenseman, big body, but... It's also not on Krug, and I've been saying that the whole time, but this whole season, it's been nothing just but hate towards Tory Krug. And then Kevin Hayes being healthy as scratch um, for multiple games when they were fighting for a playoff spot just really goes to show how bad Doug Armstrong messed up last year's offseason. Like, you need assets on this team that will help this team in the future. You're not going to get that with um, scratching. And I get why he healthy scratched him, but at the end of the day, like, you can't do that. And, you know, for the younger guy, like, I'm glad that Bull Duke got a chance to play up Zach Dean. I was happy for him. Um, you know, Perunovic and Tucker, you know, the season going back and forth. Like, a lot of positives with the younger guys, right? I just expected more out of certain players. And I'm, I know I'm kind of going on a little bit of a rant right now, and I do apologize. But when you expect things out of certain players, you expect things out of a Braden Shen. And Shen did step up at some points, okay? Um, expected more out of him. Kyra is a weird one because I feel like he gets so much hate as it is. And I'm not on that team of hating on Jordan Kyra. I don't believe in that. I just think it's nasty with how he sometimes gets treated. So I just think that – and we'll evaluate his season here in Lockdown Blues. But for now, it is what it is. It wasn't bad. Wasn't great. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of, I mean, Pavel Buchnevich, don't get me wrong. He's a good player. Did I think that he had the best season? No, but he didn't have like a bad season. Colton Pareko stepped up big time. I, again, another player that takes unnecessary hate. I don't understand all the unnecessary hate. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like at the end of the day, this is the team that you want to do well, the team that you want to win. So I don't get why there's always such unnecessary hate 24-7. But, you know, can't control everything that goes on, right? Right. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you about my friends over at FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. 
but on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So I get it. It's a little disappointing right now. You feel a little discouraged. Listen, I'm the same way. And I think that, you know, we have to look forward to certain things. I'm looking forward to watching the finale of the Blues this season tomorrow. I think that's exciting. I know that, you know, we don't go to the playoffs, but I'm still excited, you know. It's uh, it's something. But now it is time for us to think about the draft. And um, I think the draft is going to be something that is just so important to talk about. And where do I think the Blues are going to fall? Maybe they'll get like, oh, geez, from ranging from maybe like the 14th to 10th pick, I think that's where the Blues could fall. There is a lot of great defensemen in this draft. Um, a lot of defensemen that I don't think we're going to get because they are really good this year. And I'll talk more about it. But for instance, a player that I liked even last year when I was thinking about this upcoming draft is defenseman Sam Dickinson. I really think this guy is a, a truly amazing. OHL London. And the thing about Sam Dickinson, right, is that he is a player that I did say the whole time that would fit in well with this team. And why am I telling you this? Why am I trying to get you excited about a player that, you know, may or may not be drafted by the Blues? Well, to be fair, he is one of the better prospects of this draft. Um, 17 years old, so, which, again, weird because it makes me feel old. But, I mean, he is just so high up in the rankings. And I think that at the end of the day, when you have a player, as in Sam Dickinson, who is just a solid defenseman, you got to take a look at him and you got to really evaluate. I mean, as a defenseman, this season, 68 games, 18 goals, and 52 assists. Are you kidding me? Now, that is a player that should make you feel excited, a player that you should just be like, you know what, Haley? I'm going to trust what you're saying because while it is not good that we didn't make the playoffs, it gives us an advantage to maybe get some talent like that. Do I think we're going to get Sam? Honestly, no. I think that he's going to uh, he's going to be uh, pretty hard to get. I mean, he might fall back. I just don't know if I expect him to fall that far back. But again, it's it's tough. The draft is tough. And even later in the draft, you have Spencer Gill, who is another player. Um, You know, and it's funny, like I was doing a lot of research on all these different, you know, draft prospects, right? Because that's just like what I like to do for fun. I I think it's a fun thing. I enjoy it. And I'm kind of weird. And just excuse me, but this is my priority is getting ready for the draft. Again, 17 years old. High up in the, I mean, he's going to fall probably later in the first round, but this is another player where you should really begin to look at him. I mean, he's a big guy, six foot four, okay? And this season, games played 65, 12 goals, 34 assists as a defenseman, which is absolutely insane. I mean, when you look at these players, right, you can't help but be excited. I mean, he's from Canada. Um, But, yeah, he shoots right, so I think he would fit in really well. But you look at these big body guys, and it's like, oh, my goodness. Like, this is somebody that could truly be an elite option for the St. Louis Blues. And, of course, you're going to want to look at guys, you know, like your wingers and your centers, and I get that. But the priority should be defense, defense, defense. And I think just having some really solid players It's going to get the job done, and uh, I'm really excited. I mean, I have a list of players that I am ready to talk in more depth. I mean, this was kind of like a little short bit of detail. Um, I plan on doing episodes truly just dedicated to these players. I'm going to try to reach out and even try to get them to join the – well, maybe not them, but 
people that cover them to join the podcast. And then when I go to the draft in person, you will get that exclusive coverage because I am telling you, last year, I believe I covered DeBoer Dvorsky for like 10 minutes on an episode. I want to make it. So I, when we get our guy, when he becomes a St. Louis Blue, there will be a whole entire episode up previously of me talking about him in full detail. That is my goal. Do I know if it's going to happen or not? I really hope so. It depends on how Dougie A does in this draft. So expect a lot of draft talk. And if you're somebody that likes the draft and you're not a Blues fan, obviously I encourage you to watch Locked on Blues. Um, inform yourself because that's the most important thing now, for me at least. Until the end of the season. Well, it's a, the end of the season's tomorrow for us in St. Louis. But this is the priority right now is getting ready for the so I'm going to talk, as I said, just a little bit more about that. But before I dive into some more things, because you know I'm going to, I just want to talk about my friends over at Sleeper. It's the end of the season, Blues fans. And yes, we didn't make the playoffs and it is disappointing. But we have one game left. And that's why you need to choose guys like a Robert Thomas, a Jake Neighbors, a Bennington if he's playing, a Hofer if he's a net, to record more or less in their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win 100 times but on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Blues fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nailing your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. So, the last thing I want to talk about is it's okay to be disappointed. It's okay for the season to obviously not be one that you look back on and say, oh, this was my favorite season because I get it. it. It wasn't. <laughs> it's not. But, there is some things that you can look back on, and maybe that's the experiences that you had going to Blues games this season. So I asked you on Twitter at Lockdown Blues, Blues fans, how many games did you attend this year? Um, I'm going to start with myself. Ironically, since I do the podcast, we all know that I don't live in St. Louis, but I was very fortunate to go to one game this year when they traveled, and I had an opportunity to interview the players. So again, those interviews will be posted soon. But it was so much fun. I was talking to everybody in the um, crowd. I was like, where are you coming from? And I got a lot of people from St. Louis. But I also got people that are literally Blues fans from all over the country that I met. So that was really cool for me. Um, I always see the Blues once a year. Hopefully next year I'll be able to travel out to St. Louis to see them at Enterprise. But we'll see with how um, the prices of airlines can be because we know those are expensive. So let me go start with you. So Blues Moose said one. BFR said six, including one preseason. Preseason games are so underrated. Least expensive games to go to. And you still get to see all the players, basically. Uh, wow. Uh, Frist said 20 to 30. Long season of ups and downs. Are you, I wonder if he's a season ticket number holder. Charlie said one, but I'm in Iowa. Zach said three. Josh said three, which is average for me. I went to the one right after Baruby was fired and heard the Cairo booing. Also took my eight-year-old son to his first game. It was one against the Leafs. Nice. Billy says one. Wellman says three. NL says two. Steven says two. Oh, wow. Look at this. Zero, but I live in Australia. International Blues fans. Um, Tanya says five. TZ says five. Oh, wow. Blue No Coverage says ten games, four home, six away. Insane. I love that. Um, so it's basically, it sums up a lot of you went to games this season and a lot of you also mentioned that you don't live in St. Louis. So you have to see them where your city is the one that has the closest hockey team, I guess. And this brings me to my next point about fandom. We have fans all over. And even if you haven't seen the blues in person in St. Louis and you were able to see them on the road, that still counts. Um, it still counts if you just watch them on your TV. It still counts if you just listen to a radio call. It counts. While I understand going to games in person is so much fun and it's such a cool experience, 
that doesn't ever take away from your fandom of what being a blues fan is. Blues fans are everywhere. Blues fans are not always an enterprise. They could be at home watching on the TV. So I just wanted to ask, because I was genuinely curious about how many games, um, because again, like I know a lot of you traveled and, you know, it's not easy to travel to like follow a team when they're going city to city. So I was really blown away when I got told that by some people and uh, that was impressive. But this year, personally, I'm heading out to Las Vegas in June for the draft for Locked on Blues, which is so exciting. And then hopefully next season, I'm going to try to do like a back to back, if that makes sense. Um, I don't Obviously, we don't know the schedule yet. But I'm going to try to stay in St. Louis for a couple nights and see two games. And uh, that way I'll be able to make the most out of it. So not that one game isn't enough, but it would be cool to just have two games while I'm out there. So it will be fun. I'm excited. Um, it's going to be a good. I'm happy. I'm disappointed. I am. But I am feeling very optimistic about the future. And I think that's what brings me the smile on my face. So. It's going to be okay, St. Louis, and I hope that this podcast just makes you feel a little bit more confident about what to expect from the team next season because, again, it's going to be most likely a new coach. You're going to get some new players from this offseason, free agency. There's so much. The draft, it's going to be a whole different team on the ice, I'm hoping at least. I really hope so. (laughs) Oh, man. I, I really hope Doug Armstrong just doesn't do what he did last year or else. Well, yeah, then it's not going to change. But let's be optimistic for like a little bit. And then when it gets to the point where we have to face reality that we have Doug Armstrong and everything sucks again, then we'll face that bridge. All right. I will talk to you tomorrow on our final game day episode. Oh, wow. That makes me, uh, that makes me sad. So I'll do a pregame show and then I'll do a post game. We're doing both this time because this is the last time ever that I can do a St. Louis Blues 2023-2024 pregame show. Oh, I got sad. All right. Well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And like always, let's go Blues.